All right, so here she is after servicing the capacitors and some other things. This is the first power up. It's looking decent. It's a little bit stretched on the top. And we also have some waveness going on on the picture. Could be a poor contact on a tube socket or a bad IF tube. I don't know. I have to investigate that. I need to tweak the linearity, especially the top is a little bit stretched and the bottom is a little bit squished. The focus is not fantastic, but it's decent. There's your focus sliding magnet, there's your ion trap, I, I had to move it because I had no picture. And this lever right there that goes through the yoke and comes out on here. You can push it, pull it and then twist it to center the picture. I played with that a little bit and the picture is centered sort of here's the brightness i'm going to put the brightness in maximum as you can see it's really bright and i just put the phone camera in crazy mode i'm sorry this is contrast if you turn it too much if you turn it down too much you'll lose the sync okay so the another another thing that i have to do is i have the horizontal control all the way to the right and i need to center that in the underside there's a trimmer pot and you put the control in the, in the center of its travel and then you adjust the trimmer till you get the full lock that way you you have movement to the left or to the right to be able to adjust this because right now it's turned all the way to the right. There we have a fairly decent picture. And right now I'm going to show you the underside of the chassis and other stuff that I did to, the, to it. All right, before I flip it, let's take a look at the upper side. So this was very, very, very rusted, very pitted and rusted. So I don't have time or patience to completely strip this chassis down and have it painted because it comes painted from the factory. It's not plated, but painted. I don't have time or patience for that. And I don't want to risk damaging a coil or something. So I don't have any spare parts for this set. So what I did was kind of a half-assed job but it's protected and it looks decent it's not filthy like it was so I just sanded down the, the bigger part of the rust applied some rust converter and just brushed some some silver paint on top to protect it to stop it from further deteriorating I gave it a, a clean on both sides doesn't look very professional but it certainly does look much better than it did there you have your filter cans completely restuffed with modern capacitors I uh, I crimped, it, crimped them like they are originally crimped from the factory so you cannot see that they were serviced they look completely stock I removed the rat nest that was inside of the flyback. Luckily the rats did not eat any wires of, of the flyback. Here on the front, we got our controls all cleaned and polished. This control was broken, it was missing this, this part right here, you can see. Right, so control, volume control has been repaired. The shaft of the volume control was actually broken. It was it came loose from the wiper inside of the potentiometer, so I had to open the potentiometer and epoxy the two parts together. 
I glued the dial glass. I'm not gonna make a reproduction for now. As you can see, I used a piece of steel, angled piece of steel, and why? Because in the back side of the glass there is the paint, and if you glue the glass, if you if you glue a piece on the back to the paint, it doesn't it doesn't offer any any rigidity because if you if you try to do this the paint will just shear off and the glass will break again you will be left with a broken glass and even worse ruined paint so what i did is i used an angled piece of steel that is glued to the back but it's also glued here to the top of the glass and the same thing on the bottom so it's really really strong i'm not afraid that it will break unless someone punches it I hope that doesn't happen. This was repainted. This was aluminium and it had a, some sort of paint which was deteriorated. This golden effect paint is not the ideal solution if you use a TV a lot because it will wear out very easily. And if you clear coat, if you clear coat it, it will just melt and lose the golden effect. So it's really a kind of a aesthetical solution but not very permanent unfortunately some of these potentiometers were frozen and i used a hair dryer to get them loose as you can see there we are on channel three because you see that little red pointer now we are on four and on three again so that was not present there was no string no pointer these wheels or pulleys whatever you call them they were not here this one was here but the locking ring or whatever it is on the top was broken from the rust i reinstalled all that lubricated it all works and now let's take a look on the bottom So here's the underside of the chassis. All of these resistors are of the type that doesn't drift, so they're all fine. Got there a ceramic capacitor, that's just a bypass capacitor to ground, it's on the audio stage. And on place of that we had a polystyrene capacitor that was chewed up by the mice can see there the bottom of our restuffed filter cans that white wire is the ground that I had to install because these cans were grounded by the chassis which is a very dumb thing because the chassis is painted but I installed the ground wire that goes all the way through that yellow sleeve and grounds right there I chose this this bar here because everything connected here is related to the power supply section so I wanted to avoid hum I hope uh, I hope I succeeded on that let me get a pointer okay. okay so as you can see I used these rectangular capacitors Nothing wrong with those, people don't like these parts, but they're just a regular film capacitor, they're cheap, available locally, they're high quality, they're not Chinese shit, they're not the best brand available, but at least they have a brand, and they work, they work fine, never had problems with these, these are better than the yellow tubular capacitors that most people use on their radios. They don't look so pretty, but they work. See there, the leg was too short and I used this spiral thing to, to extend the lead a little bit. Right there I used a women capacitor, high quality. Weird form factor for this type of point-to-point -point wiring, but it works. More Wemas up in there. That's the audio. Oh, volume control, audio output transformer. This is horizontal oscillator part of the circuit. 
These are trimmer pots for the horizontal and vertical centering to center the, the hold controls. This is the main filter choke. You got more rectangular goodies right there. That's our tuner and this is the IF. I got here two ceramic capacitors on the IF because there was a blown up capacitor in here. Fortunately, it was just a snubbering capacitor from the heater chain to ground, so no big deal with that. I could just bypass it, but I put those ceramic discs in there. Two kilovolt ceramic discs. I think they will never blow up in their life. That, that fat orange guy is the boost capacitor. This is a very critical part. And you cannot use any capacitor here. You need to use a special type of film capacitor that is rated for AC pulses. Because this guy is subject to high, very high AC pulses. So when you buy a capacitor, for example, a 630 volts capacitor, that's the DC rating. But here the DC rating doesn't matter. You need to buy a capacitor that's rated for high voltage AC operation. And this is a Philips MKP capacitor. That's what I regularly regularly use. It works very well there. Got an electrolytic there. And of course, this complication right here is the vertical. The only problem with this TV, apart from bad capacitors, was a dead audio output tube. And this transformer, that's part of the vertical circuit. This is not the output transformer. This is some sort of transformer impedance matching between the sink and the vertical or something like that. And it was wired completely backwards. So, uh, the voltage to the plate of the vertical output goes through this transformer and its primary winding. So, this was wired to ground instead of B+, so there was no vertical. That's why on the first power-up, our vertical was collapsed. Got here our fishing line dial string. I didn't have any radio dial string. I used fishing line. On radios you cannot use fishing line because it will slip and will not turn the tuning condenser in an appropriate way. But this is just to drive a pointer so it works perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. And that's pretty much it. There's not much that I can do about this little spots of rust. If I go and repaint on certain areas and don't paint the whole thing it will look miserable so I prefer to leave it like this it's not very bad it will not it will not rot or anything because it will not be left in the moisture so I took this cover off and cleaned the contacts on the tuner and it's pretty much it it's working really well now I need to see what that waviness problem is I need to adjust linearity and do a setup and I, I will finish the cabinet see you in the next video